when my publishers ring me up and ask me if I would undertake a certain commission, for instance, I always tend to say no and put the phone down. Then I immediately go to the piano and I often work all night. And then by the morning, I know the real answer. And very often nowadays, of course, the answer is yes, but I have to know that I can do it. So the music is clear to me, at least in embryo. Then I feel confident to ring up the publishers and say to them, yes, I will write this piece, because I know that inside me that piece is already beating. When I was asked to write a piece of music that lasted all night, three or four years ago, that was more difficult, because what I then had to do was shut myself away and just start writing, write and write and write and write. And this I started to do. Then, gradually, the veil of the temple started to reveal itself, the structure that took place over eight hours or seven hours started to reveal itself as I wrote it. The form of the whole piece started to emerge once I had finished the, what came later, the first cycle. It's constructed in eight cycles. This question of form is very important. The form has to feel right with me, and the notes have to feel right. And the only way I can find that out is by going out into the art of God, into nature, basically. I look at the sea, I look at the sunset, something as simple as that, hardly simple, something as primordial and as magnificent as either of those things. And I think of what I am thinking of formally in music, and I think of the notes, of their intervals, of their rhythms, and I look at the sunset, and I look at the trees, and I look at the hills, and I think, does that match up at all? what I'm looking at. That's a kind of Zen Buddhist concept too. And if it truly does, then I know that I'm at least beginning to get it right. I'm conscious when I'm interviewed and I'm conscious when I talk that it could sound as if I'm some sort of daft New Age person who just has some rather woolly concepts in my head and I don't really work hard, and I don't really sit down and think about structure, the mathematical construction, and music itself. I tend not to speak about it because I think there is an overemphasis today on art for art's sake, as I've said thousands of times. But obviously, when I'm writing music, it's of the most enormous importance to me, uh, the structure of it, the way it mathematically goes, if it doesn't make mathematical sense to me, it won't do, just as if it doesn't make metaphysical sense, it won't do. I have a wonderful working relationship with my editor, and she's known me and known my work for nearly 30 years, so she knows the way I work, and she often rings me up and says, John, I think you can't seriously mean what you've just written, and often she's, or not often, almost every time she's right, because she knows exactly how I work. I sometimes keep charts of what I did in the process of composing on pieces of paper. And then I have to go and look, search all over the room to see if I can find the charts to work out how it was I arrived at such and such a note or such and such a rhythm. Then I'm able to answer her questions. And if I didn't do this, it would be very difficult for me to work out quite what, what exactly I did. So the process of writing and the form while I'm doing it is totally all-encompassing. It's just that I think this over-sophisticated society, as I've said before, is too interested in the concept of art for art's sake. And, you know, critics tend to write about just that, you know, how a piece of music was constructed, rather than the effect that it actually had on them. And I think that's far more important. And that's why I'm interested in the reactions that ordinary people have to me. I find that I discuss formal concepts more with poets and more with painters than I do with musicians. There's a painter who lives in my village in Dorset whom I often go around and talk to about form because there are, of course, connections between painting and music. And there are icon painters that I enjoy talking to very much. Most artists who work within a traditional concept I find interesting to talk to. 
I used to find Cecil Collins a wonderfully amusing character to talk about. He he would always say about his paintings, look like like dogs do it to me most of the time until I finish the thing. I can't say that my music looks like dog dirt most of the time until I finish the thing, but I wouldn't like anybody to see it while I was writing it. I think that, that I can only let them see it when it's finished. <laughs>